Well, it's here. My new 10-stop ND square filter from Case Filters. Now, in this video, I'm going to try it out and I'm going to talk about the filter itself, why I bought this particular filter, and I'm going to talk about how and when we use ND filters and essentially what they're for and what conditions we would need an ND filter and all of that stuff. So let's get started, shall we? So, as you would expect from Case, the quality is superb. It comes in this nifty little uh, case, which in itself is quite solid, nice and soft inside, so your filter is well protected. But if you know anything about Case filters, they're pretty well protected on their own. Their filters are made, they're not resin at all, they're made of glass. They're made of toughened glass actually, and they're really, really solid. Now this filter itself is about two millimeters thick, and it's solid toughened glass. You can't bend it, and I'm pretty sure you couldn't break it if you tried. Now, I've got a resin filter. I've got a Lee Filters uh, three-stop hard grad resin filter that I could actually bend, and I could probably snap it if I wanted to. And actually my Lee filters pretty soon after I got it, it got scratched quite easily. I uh, accidentally put two filters in together. And the, actually the filter I put it in with didn't get scratched, but the Lee filters one got scratched. Thankfully it was somewhere at the top, so it's not somewhere where it would show up in my pictures. But still, you know, it just showed how easily it got scratched. So the case filters are made of toughened glass. So they're really, really tough. You can't bend them, you can't break them. And if you drop them, there's a very, very, I wouldn't say 100% because nothing's 100%, but there's a very, very high chance that it will come away undamaged. Now I know that for a fact because I also have the K9, uh, the K9 filter holder with the magne magnetic polarizer that comes with it. And I did drop that on some rocks beside the river and it came away completely unscathed. Not a single mark on it, fantastic. So it just goes to show you the quality of the case filters and how well protected they are on their own. But of course, you know, it also comes with this. So you can also keep it stored in this nice handy little case. So this is the case K9 filter holder and magnetic circular polarizer. Now I bought this a few years ago and I did a review on this so I'll stick a link to that up here if you want to go check that out. So uh, the idea of the, the K9 filter holder is as it says it's a square filter holder. Now I bought this to replace my Lee filter holder so I had a, a Lee filter holder which is a good filter holder don't get me wrong but uh, I was looking to get a uh, polarizer that would fit on the filter holder for Lee and the Lee one was quite expensive and at the time it, it worked out that to buy this new filter holder that comes with the polarizer was actually cheaper than just buying the polarizer for the Lee one and the great thing about this is it's magnetic and it also goes in the front rather than on the uh, sorry it also goes in first I should say rather than where the, the Lee one attaches to the front. So with the Lee one, you have to put the, the square filters in first and then you put the polarizer on the front. Well, this is the opposite. The polarizer goes in first. So you can see that it just slots in here and you can turn it like so. And then you put your filters in afterwards. So this is fantastic. This is really, really good. And the whole kit was cheaper than buying just the Lee polarizer to go with my Lee holder. So, um, Essentially, part of the reason why I wanted to get the square ND filter was because I wanted to use it alongside my square grads. So uh, you can get a screw-on filter. I do actually have a Hoyer six-stop screw-in filter. And you can screw that on first, then screw this on, and then put these on. But the problem is, if you want to take your ND filter off, you then got to take all of this off first, unscrew your ND filter, and then stick this back on. 
and it's not very convenient if you want to switch between using the filter in one shot and not using the filter in the next shot, which can happen. Sometimes you might want to do, oh, I just want to do one long exposure. I'll stick the ND filter on and then I'll take it off for the next shot. So it's much more convenient to just be able to slot in uh, a square filter along with your grad filters. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to get the square one. And of course, having experienced now uh, the case filter and how tough and this filter is and the quality of the build of the case system. I had no qualms in immediately going out and buying the square filter from case itself. Now the thing about using an ND filter is that it needs to be completely sealed. So when you put the filter in, there mustn't be any light leakage that comes in behind the filter because then this first of all negates the use of the filter but also gives you uh, it ruins your shot basically so it needs to be sealed and many square filters like this especially the ones from Lee come with a foam around the outside so when you slot it in it forms that seal but the great thing about case they're always coming up with great ideas instead what they've done is the K9 filter itself has a little gasket a foam gasket on it already so you don't need that on the filter itself but all you need to do is ensure that you put the filter in the first slot so the square the the ND filter must go in the first slot and then it's against the the gasket and it's completely sealed off so there'll be no light leakage whatsoever genius idea right eh? So what's the point of an ND filter? Well, the point of an ND filter is to give us longer exposures in conditions where we wouldn't be able to get long exposures, essentially when it's too bright. So it's now the afternoon time. It's around four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, it's very cloudy. There's a lot of thick cloud around. The sun's not uh, coming through the cloud at the moment. Hopefully it might break through at some point, but still it's very, very bright. And in situations like this, even if I put my ISO down to 100 and I put my aperture down as small as I can to F16 or even F22, I still wouldn't be able to get a 30 second or a one minute exposure. So the idea of the ND filter is to artificially darken the scene, to fool the camera into believing it's actually darker than what it is. So you can see that the camera, that the filter itself, sorry, is extremely dark. And this is a 10 stop filter. And what that means is that it will reduce the amount of light entering the camera and falling on the sensor by 10 stops. And you will be able to get a 10 stop lower shutter speed than you would without this. So what do we mean by 10 stops? What do we mean by stops, actually? So if you're not familiar with the terminology, I'll explain it a little bit now. When you think about your shutter speed, if you set a shutter speed of 1125, so 125th of a second, if you then increase that shutter speed but to 1250th, so 250th of a second, so double, one, one, two times 125 is 250. So if you double that shutter speed, you've actually increased your shutter speed by one stop. Conversely, if you decrease the shutter speed from 1125 down to 1 60th, then you have decreased your shutter speed by one stop. So one stop is equal to twice the amount or half the amount of your shutter speed. The same goes for your ISO. If you set an ISO of 200, if you then increase that ISO to 400, you've increased the ISO by one stop. If you decrease the ISO by to 100, from 200 to 100, then you have decreased your ISO by one stop. The same goes for apertures, but the F numbers are slightly different, but it's the same concept. You can increase or decrease your, uh, your aperture by one stop. And modern cameras today 
most uh, digital cameras, you can actually increase it by a third of a stop, two thirds of a stop and one stop, or you can go into your settings and change it to increment by half stops if you want to. But basically that's what it is. So if I've got a shutter speed of 1 2 50th of a second, I take it down to 1 1 2 5, I've taken it down by one stop. If I then take it down again, 1 1 2 5 down to 1 60, I've taken it down two stops from 1 2 50th. If I take it down again from 1 60 to 1 30, I've taken it down three stops and so on. So what will happen is this will give me a 10 stop reduction. So if I've got 1 2 50th of a second, if I stick this on, I can then reduce my shutter speed or my exposure time down by 10 stops. So let's try it out and you can see how it works. So to begin with, I need to put the filter holder on. It's really super easy to just screw on and then undo this to, to set it. So we've got the wheel this side so I can turn the polarizer. And if I want to have the polarizer in, I can simply uh, have the polarizer off. I just simply pull it out like that or pop it back on. So that's really handy. And it's very easy if I want to take the polarizer off, I just pull out the, the square filters, pull that off and slot them back in again. So as I explained, if I want to, when I want to put this in, I simply slide this in the first slot and then it's against that foam seal and it's completely sealed. There'll be no light leakage at all. And then, this is part of the reason why I got this, if I then need to use a grad filter, I can then slide the grad filter in after it. Now this is my Lee filter. Unfortunately, I don't have any case grad filters yet, but they're on my list to get for sure. But I can use them together like this. There are three slots, up to three slots. You can, uh, the filter holder comes with uh, basically a little screwdriver set, an Allen key set. So you can put just two slots if you want, or you can put a third slot. So you can have up to three filters on here, plus the polarizer at the back. So that's really, really useful. So that's basically it. So I then can do it like this. And as I say, the ND filter must go first, always. So what I can do is slot this into the second one, keep this off for now while I set things up and then put the filter in afterwards. Now you have to do that because once you've got this on, it's very, very difficult to, for the camera to see anything. So it's hard for it to focus. Uh, it's also very, very, the live view basically doesn't really show anything um, and things like that. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So as I said, it's uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. Although it's cloudy, there's still quite a bit of light. In this composition here, where I focus on the foreground and take my light reading, at F16, ISO 100, is still only giving me 1 13th of a second. So that's not a very long shutter speed. So if I want to get that longer, then I need to use this ND filter to darken it down. Now, in the foreground here, I've got about 1 13th of a second, and the sky itself is coming in at about 1 30th. So in some places, it was a little bit more. So I've got roughly a one stop difference between the foreground and the sky itself. And when that sun breaks through, that could well change. So typically I've got a one to two stop difference. So in this case, I'm also going to want to use a grad filter because I want to uh, balance the sky in the foreground and I essentially want to brighten up that foreground a bit. So uh, I don't actually have a one stop grad filter because I actually don't see the point because you can easily retrieve one stop uh, in the raw file itself. You can pull back the detail. It doesn't get burnt out. So I don't see the point of a one stop, but I do have a two stop medium grad. So I'll stick that on now. So I've set the polarizer. There's not a whole lot of sun coming through and there's only a little bit of 
some blue patches there. So it's quite hard to set. And I find it easier to set the polarizer looking through the viewfinder rather than the view screen itself. So I've set that up. So the polarization is set accordingly. And now we'll put the two stop. Now, if you use it on its own, as I said, you put it in the first slot, but because I know I'm gonna put my ND filter in, I'm gonna put it in the second slot ready. So now I've positioned that accordingly. And when you put your ND filter in, you also get a slight reduction in uh, light. So now it's given me one eighth of a second. I can do a test shot. And that's it. Now you can see oh, by the histogram, it's perfectly exposed now, perfectly balanced. So there's some really nice dark clouds coming in around about now. So it's actually making for quite a nice shot. So at one eighth of a second, F16, ISO 100, that's the longest shutter speed I can get. Now we'll see what happens when I put the 10 stop ND in. There we go. Now you can barely see anything on the screen. If I try to take a light reading, it's flashing 30 seconds, which means it wants more than 30 seconds. And it's just managed to uh, focus, but it's very, very difficult. It can sometimes be very difficult to focus depending on where your focal point is, but that's focusing nicely. But we can see that it's now flashing. Now if I wanna get 30 seconds, one of the quickest ways I could do it is to increase my ISO. So if I take that up to 200, it's still flashing. If I take it up to 400, it's now, it's not flashing. And because it's actually focused, let's do one 30 second exposure. There we go. Now that's given me 30 seconds. Now you can see it's not a whole lot of movement in the clouds at the moment. So I could try for a one minute exposure. Now I know a little trick, once you know you've got your focus locked and to be really sure that, you're, that it has focused accurately, what you can do is remove the ND filter, reposition that so it's go. Focus without the ND filter. There we go. And then flick it to manual focus. So you've then locked that focus in. So you don't have to worry about it hunting or focusing incorrectly. Now I can slot my ND filter back in again. Now it's not having to worry about focusing and it's given me 1 30th. But I know that at ISO 400, if I decrease my ISO by one stop to 200, that means that I would have to increase my shutter speed from 30 seconds. I'd need to double that to 60 seconds. So now I can get a one minute exposure. So what I can do is flick to bulb. Now make sure in bulb I've got uh, F16 set and ISO 200 and now by manually timing it, I can do a one minute exposure. Yeah. Now you can see it's slightly underexposed. I got one minute there. So this is a quick way of doing it, but not always the most accurate. But there is another way to do it.
Now that's quite a simple and effective way to do it. If you're trying to get basically a 30 second exposure or maybe a one minute exposure and you can use that simple technique to work it out, even a two minute exposure. But if you want to get a longer exposure than that, several minutes, or even, you know, uh, if the setup is a bit more complicated, then it can be easier to use a, a, an exposure calculator app. And you can easily download them on your smartphone, on your iPhone. There are many that you can download for free. But if you have Photopills, then Photopills also includes an exposure calculator app, which is really, really useful. And it also it gives you a timer built in. So when you've calculated your exposure and you've set everything, you can then press their timer and it will do a little countdown and even give you a little alarm bell when the, the countdown has finished and, and it's time to, to finish your exposure. So if you open up the Photopills app and you go to the pills section where you've got your planner, your sun and everything, you'll see the exposure icon. Click the exposure to open the exposure calculator. And so what you do is that without the grad in, you set everything up just like I showed you, and you take your reading. So I've got ISO 100, F16, one eighth of a second. So test settings, you put that in there. So I'll set my ISO to 100. I'll set the shutter speed. It's telling me I need was, look again, one eighth of a second. And the, I've got F16 set, so I'll make sure I've got that dialed in. And then the equivalent settings. So if I want to do use the same ISO 100, I set that to ISO 100. F16, I want to use the same F number. And I'm using a 10 stop ND filter. So I enter 10 stops, click that. And now underneath it's telling me that I need a shutter speed of two minutes, eight seconds at those settings. So now I can go into my bulb. Again, check I've got ISO 100, F16. Slot in. My filter. And when I'm ready to go, I can just simply down to the bottom here, I've got timer. It's already set it to two minutes, eight seconds. I can change that, increase that if I want to, but I'll leave it as it's set. Now I can lock my exposure and start my timer. And now my timer is counting down from two minutes, eight seconds, at the end of which it will give me a nice little alarm bell to wake me up and tell me to finish my exposure. There's my alarm. And there's my two minute exposure. So here is my exposure. If we look at the info, it's perfectly exposed. I've got a good histogram, slightly underexposed at the end, but that's okay. Uh, we want to do that to preserve the highlights. And I've got a 138 seconds here and ISO 100. So everything worked out nicely. Now, if I want to get longer than two minutes, then there is a way to do that as well. Now, you don't have to always go back to your test shot to do it. Now, I double checked quickly that the, the, the situation hadn't changed. I mean, first of all, if the light's changing, of course, then you may need to go back and, and do another test. I did that quickly, but the light hasn't changed and I'm still getting without the, without the ND filter, one eighth of a second F16 ISO 100. So the calculation I just showed you, the calculation I just showed you gave us just over two minutes. But let's say I want to get more than that. Now rather than, I don't need to go back 
and do another test at a higher, uh, at a smaller aperture or anything like that, I can simply use the exposure calculator to do that. So I'll show you how to do that now. So if we revisit our Photofills app, go back to exposure. Now the way we had it before, let's set it again to what we had before. ISO 100, one eighth of a second, F16, ISO 100. Our equivalent settings, again, we're using a 10 stop. So that's given us two minutes, eight seconds, just like it did before. But let's say I want more than that. Now, I'm already on ISO 100. I can't go any lower on this. Some cameras can. You might be able to go down to ISO 50, but I can't. So my only other option to get a longer shutter speed now, uh, a longer exposure time, is to reduce the size of my aperture. Give myself a smaller aperture. And I'm already on F16. I wouldn't ordinarily do this, but I'm going to do it for demonstration purposes. I can, I know that I can put my aperture up to F18 or F22 even to make it much smaller, to reduce the amount of light coming in even more, which I know will give me a longer uh, shutter speed, a longer exposure time. Now, I can just simply go to my equivalent settings and change my aperture to say, now I'm going to set an aperture of F18. Now, it's telling me I need, it will give me two minutes, 41 seconds. If I want longer, let's try F20. Now it's telling me three minutes, 23 seconds. If I really want to go full on, I can go to F22, which mine can do. Now it's going to give me four minutes, 16 seconds. That's a long exposure. Now the one downside to digital cameras, with film cameras, you could expose for half an hour, two hours, five hours all day, and you wouldn't have a problem. But with digital cameras, you get the problem with noise. Long exposures, create noise. And the reason is that the longer the exposure, the hotter the sensor gets. Basically, the sensor gets hot because it's being powered for such a long time. And that heat produces noise in your image. So the longer exposure you use, the more chance you have of introducing noise into your image. Now, many modern cameras are much better at handling noise. The newer cameras are far, far better than the older ones. And of course, the higher spec cameras are even better. So depending on what camera you've got, how long you can expose before you start getting problems with noise will very much depend on that. And I know that I've got a 5D Mark III. It's about eight, nine years old now. So it's pretty old, but it's a good high spec camera. But even then I know that I can do one minute maybe two depending on the conditions. The conditions account too, because if it's summer like now and it's hot, well, that increases the heat of the, the sensor. Whereas if you're working in very cold conditions, then it's almost like an artificial cooling system for your sensor. So depending on the situation you're working in will depend on how long you can go before you get problems with noise. Now it's summer, it's quite warm, although it's cloudy, it's warm, it's humid. And I know that if I do a four minute exposure, I'm gonna get a lot of noise, but I'm gonna do it anyway for demonstration purposes. As it's told me, if I set now my aperture to F22, ISO 100, I can do an exposure of four minutes, four minutes, 16 seconds. So let's turn on my nifty timer and start. The countdown has begun. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six. And there's my alarm again. And my four minute exposure. Perfect. So once again, here we are. 262 seconds. F22, nice histogram again, only slightly underexposed to, to retain all the uh, detail. Nicely exposed image and a nice long streaky sky as a result. 
So the clouds seem to be breaking a bit there, but there wasn't much light falling over the church and the hill and things like that. So I did notice that as the sun is coming down this way, it's occasionally breaking through and giving some nice light rays and there's a nice lot of cloud there. And it's also uh, casting some nice light on those hills over there. So I've put the longer lens on and this time I've got the three stop uh, hard grad on there because that sky now is very, very bright because I'm shooting right into where the sun is. This is a good test of the ND filter too. So now I've got this set up and I flick to manual and now I'm going to stick my 10 stop on. There we go. Now of course it's flashing. Let's do my calculation. So I've got ISO 100, 1 15th, F16. Now I want the equivalent, I don't want to do F22. ISO 100, 10 stops, 1 minute 8 seconds. Let's do Make sure whenever you flick these things, because the bulb was set to 22, so I've got that set that back to F16, ISO 100. Now I'm going to do a one minute, eight second exposure here. There's a nice build up of cloud there, so let's see how fast it's moving. One minute, eight seconds. And we're done. Well, that's a nice image. I'll show you. I know in my camera, I like to keep my exposures to around one minute, maybe two at a push depending on the conditions, but I never really like to push it beyond that. Now I know there are some, there are plenty of uh, great programs out there like Topaz um, that will help to get rid of the noise that's created. But the other thing, the downside to many of those is that you end up with a very soft image that's lacking definition. So I prefer, quite frankly, just not to do it. Maybe uh, when I get the a newer camera, I'm actually after the R5, and I believe that is even better at handling uh, noise at longer exposures or high ISOs. So, you know, the next camera, again, I'll do the same thing. I'll test its limits and work within its limits. So I know that with my camera in these conditions, I try to keep it around one minute. And one minute has done beautifully for that image. So I can see that over there, there's another church on the hill there. That's the Church of St. Nicholas, actually. And there's some lovely cloud buildup over there and the light from the sun as it's going down over here is, is falling beautifully over the hills and the church itself. So I'm going to move to a position down there where I can get a close-up shot of that. Oh. There's some really great cloud over there. This is in a small village up there called Yanche. And I did a little video on this village, so I'll put a link up to that now. It's, so as you can see, that's some great cloud. Lovely contrast, some dark cloud at the top, some white cloud, streaky cloud through the middle, some blue sections there. So perfect, because the light is coming from the side, so I can also uh, have some effect with the polarizer. There we go. That should darken that nicely. So I've got 1 25th of a second on the church. 1 30th. So there's not a big difference between the sky and the foreground. So 
I'm not going to use the grad this time. 1 30th of a second F16 ISO 100. Some lovely light falling on that church. That's going to be a perfect exposure. So I'm going to lock that to manual and put my 10 stop on. Now it's flashing 30 seconds. I'm going to take it up to ISO 200. Now it's giving me 20 seconds. That's enough. As I say, I don't want to go too far. So let's see how fast those clouds are moving with the 20 second exposure. But there's not that much movement in the cloud. The clouds are moving, but very, very slowly. So maybe now's a good time to try a one second, one minute exposure, sorry. So if I've got 20 seconds at ISO 200, then I'll take it down to ISO 100. Now it's telling me 30 seconds. That's the most it's going to give me. <laughs> so let's use my calculator and see what it would take, what aperture it would take to get a one minute exposure. ISO 100, F16, F16, ISO 100. 10 stops give me 34 seconds as it says, so let's put my F22 in as my target aperture. Now I can get one minute. So, that back to bulb, set that to F22. Now do a one minute exposure. And with that amount of light up there, to get a one minute exposure is quite something. That's the beauty of the 10 stop ND filter. And the quality is just outstanding. There is barely any or even any noticeable shift in color. Sometimes when you use grads, especially the resin ones, you get a color shift. You get um, often some turquoise or some cooling effects and uh, some of the, uh, when you do, when you use many ND filters, the images come out with a blue tone to them. Now it's easily corrected in, uh, in post-processing, especially if you're shooting in RAW, all you need to do is adjust the white balance. But still, to not have to deal with it in the first place is even better. There. Now we've got some movement at one minute. Lovely. I'll stick that up there now. So I'm going to work away here, see what kind of shots I can get. And if I get a better one, I'll stick that up at the end. But I hope you found this uh, useful. And if you have, please give this video a like and please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. If you are interested in getting the case ND filter or the K9 filter holder with the polarizer or any other case filters, I highly recommend them. And so check out the description down below. There's a link to the Case Filters UK website where you can purchase them. And there's also some affiliate links to Amazon the, where you can purchase them as well. My link to Case Filters is not an affiliate link. I'm not affiliated with uh, Case, so uh, I'm just recommending them because I think they're great. Okay, so thanks for watching and catch you later. Bye-bye.